morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, October 22nd, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 in Hamilton, and in Mexico City, 10.30. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. Uh, we're seeing some interesting economic news. Uh, 23 states plus the District of Columbia came in today reporting lower unemployment rates. Also, the uh, German Investor Confidence Index jumped actually uh, by a big margin, even though many people had been expecting it not to. Uh, earnings reports on Wall Street are all coming in pretty good, but meanwhile the stock market is down about 24 points. But on balance, things are things are looking good today on Friday. Although, who knows? By Monday, we'll go to our main news. Well, Typhoon Maggie, here we go. Let's pull the picture up. This is the track. Uh, you can see it's uh, close enough to Taiwan, which is the island off on the right. Thank goodness for Taiwan, it hasn't been uh, sustaining a direct hit. Uh, but at least three people have been killed on the island. Another 27 are missing. Torrential rains from Megi are belting Taiwan. Let's look at a picture of the flooding there. This is the strongest Northwest Pacific storm in 20 years. It's uh, prompted a number of landslides, one that buried a Buddhist temple in a coastal town. Uh, more than 1,200 millimeters of rain caused a highway to collapse, stranding 400 travelers and 32 cars. Uh, two buses were reported missing, swept away in the landslide, uh, with a total of some 27 people on both of those buses. Flash flooding has submerged streets and a railway to force dozens of schools to close. Uh, the total from the Philippines is coming in now, at least 36 people dead and some uh, $200 million worth of damage to agricultural crops. If we could pull that map back up again, uh, we'll see that the next stop from Maggie is scheduled to be southern China. <coughs> Excuse me now, the Chinese have already evacuated 160,000 people. They're expecting the storm to make landfall there tonight or early tomorrow morning. Um, they've issued a very strong storm surge warning, and they've also uh, indicated that uh, people should begin to prepare for what should be, what should be a Category 1 typhoon down from a 3. Uh, by the time it makes landfall in Fujian province. So uh, that's a very populated area of China, and uh, it's actually an area where many of the, the electrical uh, component companies are located. We'll see if any sort of uh, business interruption result ensues from that. Well, you've got to hand it to uh, Bob Benmosh. Um, AIG has raised a record $17.8 billion on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange when it IPO'd its uh, AIA unit. This is the American Insurance Association group that they uh, put up for sale with an IPO after the deal with Prudential UK fell through. AIA, AIG sold a 58% stake in the company. This makes it the largest Hong Kong public offering. This is the uh, biggest one ever in Hong Kong's history. Shares may begin trading in the Hong Kong exchange as early as October 29th. Ben Mosh has said now that the divestment of AIA uh, will put AIG well within striking distance of repaying the Federal Reserve credit line included in the company's $182 billion American taxpayer-funded bailout. Um, according to an analyst, the IPO is the biggest money in the door for AIG and the U.S. government without question. Success on this scale is the biggest step toward a government exit. Some of the investors included institutions and actual Hong Kong individuals who ordered more than $1 trillion Hong Kong dollars worth of AIA stock. Uh, some of the people who are rumored to be involved in this include the Kuwait Investment Authority, Guaco Land Limited, and Wharf Holdings Limited. Guaco and Wharf are both big Hong Kong players. Well, uh, PWS Brokers in London, they haven't been around for a while since they were bought by THB, but uh, today Julian Massent, the former CEO of PWS, pleaded guilty to paying more than $2 million in bribes to win contracts in Costa Rica. Massent admitted to two counts of corruption for funneling money to at least three Costa Rican officials to retain reinsurance contracts 
from a state-owned telecoms company. According to the lawyer for the serious fraud office, we would call that person the prosecutor, these were very large government contracts with high premiums and large amounts of money being funneled back. PWS was a London-based reinsurance broker and was founded by Lord Malcolm Pearson and was purchased by THB in 08. Uh, Miscent is going to be scheduled later today. Costa Rican prosecutors are investigating 10 people in Costa Rica for accepting bribes. Well, we'll give the daily update on France. The French government now says that fuel shortages caused by strikes will go on for a few more days. Uh, France has actually now begun to import fuel to make up for the shortfall. The prime minister convened oil industry executives this morning. Uh, he said it will take several more days for the gas situation to return to normal. What the government did say, there was no question of uh, being forced to introduce gasoline rationing. The government has ordered oil companies to pool fuel to ensure gas stations are well stocked, particularly for this weekend as the nationwide school vacation begins in France. Meanwhile, back on the streets, the French riot police forced open a strategic fuel refinery this morning that had been the linchpin of resistance to President Sarkozy's bid to raise the retirement age to 62. Uh, now, the French Senate uh, says that they are going to vote on this tomorrow. Uh, they're nearly certain to approve it. Um, this is despite months of strikes and protests and also the fact that, as I mentioned yesterday, French public opinion polls continue to show that they side with the strikers by a, uh, about a 70 percent margin. We'll go to a word from our sponsors and come back with the rest of the news. Well, this earthquake happened yesterday afternoon. We were considering coming to interrupt the, uh, the daily flow, but uh, since it occurred in the middle of the Baja uh, California, uh, Gulf of California waterway, as you can see here, and didn't do any damage, we didn't bother to come on. It was a 6.9 quake. Uh, it was only six miles deep, so it did cause some shaking in the Mexican state of Sonola, um, as well as some of the cities in very, very Southern California. Uh, as you can see here from this uh, map, uh, it's the large square. Um, there are approximately one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven other squares there, uh, and the yellow indicate quakes that have occurred in the last week. So this has been a very active seismic zone over the past seven days. Well, the rumor is back again. Jardine Lloyd Thompson is uh, supposedly the subject of a takeover attempt. Uh, shares in uh, JLT were boosted over the six-pound mark yesterday after new rumors that the broker was being bid for. 
Uh, today's speculation focused on talk of a 1.7 billion pound bid uh, that would make it eight pounds a share in cash, supposedly coming from Marsh McLennan. And however, JLT share price fell back in yesterday's afternoon trading session, uh, closing at five pounds 97 pence. Uh, as of this morning, they're down below five pounds 90. JLT has been the subject of a number of rumors uh, over the past several months. In May of this year, the stock was boosted after more rumors indicating a very strong bid by Aon. However, at that time, uh, JLT CEO Dominic Burke, in an interview with the Insurance Times, described those rumors as laughable. We don't have any other information on that. There's been a deadly cholera outbreak in Haiti. At least 142 people have died. Um, this has been Haiti's deadliest health problem since its earthquake. The outbreak in the rural Artabonite region, which hosts thousands of quake refugees, uh, now appears to confirm uh, relief groups' worst fears about sanitation for these homeless survivors. Uh, according to the uh, president of the Food for the Poor organization, we've been afraid of this since the earthquake. Many of the sick have converged on St. Nicholas Hospital in the city of St. Mark. Um, according to the health ministry, 142 people have died and more than 1,000 infected people have been hospitalized. Well, here's an interesting story about uh, Google and Bermuda. Uh, we periodically hear that uh, Bermuda is outraged that it's being uh, lumped in as one of these tax havens, <coughs> excuse me, by people in the American Congress. Well, Google has cut its taxes by $3.1 billion in the last three years using a technique that moves most of its farm profits through Ireland and then the Netherlands and then to Bermuda. Google's income shifting, involving strategies known to lawyers as the double Irish and the Dutch sandwich, have helped reduce its overseas tax rate to 2.4 percent. This is the lowest of the top five U.S. technology companies by market capitalization. According to Martin Sullivan, a tax economist who formerly worked for the IRS, it's remarkable, he said, that Google's effective rate is that low. We know this company operates throughout the world, mostly in high-tax countries where the average corporate tax rate is well over 20 percent. The American corporate income tax rate, for example, is 35 percent. In the UK, Google's second biggest market by revenue is 28 um, percent. What Google has done is it has taken advantage of Irish tax laws to legally shuttle profits into and out of subsidiaries there, largely escaping the Irish 12.5% corporate income tax rate. The earnings then wind up in islands that levy no corporate income taxes at all. Companies that use the so-called double Irish arrangement avoid taxes at home and abroad. This is as the American government tr struggles to close a projected $1.4 trillion budget gap. Google hasn't been accused of breaking any laws. According to a spokesman, they said, Google's practices are very similar to those of countless other global companies operating across a wide range of industries. Well, Facebook, the world's biggest social network, is preparing a structure similar to Google's that will send its earnings from Ireland to the Cayman Islands. Um, a spokesperson for Facebook declined to comment. Hmm. Well, uh, no comment from here either. I have friends in Bermuda and I'm going there again and I want to make sure I'm led into the country. And after my uh, conversations with Roger Crombie, I, I don't take such things lightly. Well, to our final story. Sometimes insurers think that they've underwritten and prepared and looked for everything. They think that they've covered every eventuality. But there's one thing perhaps that people haven't forgotten or have overlooked. Let's look at this. This is an interesting story. It's a mistake any busy person could make. When you change your jacket or your pants, uh, you can sometimes lose a credit card without even knowing that it's missing. Only in the case of Bill Clinton, the small plastic rectangular card that he lost contained the codes needed to launch an American nuclear strike. According to a book by Hugh Shelton, a general, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton lost the card, which is referred to in uh, parlance as the 